And we got a lot to talk about here today, but uh, I want to make a note about the raw ratings before we go any further, because apparently it's been the subject of much debate. Raw Show Monday, 1.73 million viewers and a .57 in 18 to 49. Bachelor on ABC, 4.14 million and a .8, which is very high. And uh, Iowa versus West Virginia NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, 4.9 million viewers, which would be the third largest viewing audience for a women's NCAA tournament game in the past 20 years. And Raw was up 2% in total viewers. Rating was uh, up from last week, the uh, 18 to 49, which did a 0.55 last week. And the hours, 1.76 million. 1.83 1.83 million. Second hour is now consistently higher because of the daylight savings time switch. And the third hour did 1.60 million. And as a guy who I got to hear it all the time, oh, you yeah, hate CM Punk. Well, I'm here to defend CM Punk from a bunch of stupid stuff written on the internet. In the usual, ah, oh, they couldn't get 2 million with CM Punk. The quarter hours for this show. This was one of those shows where it's kind of just sort of going like this, and then it goes, ram straight up in the air. That's CM Punk, Seth Rollins, and uh, Drew McIntyre segment. Did a whopping 2.2 million viewers for Raw. I'm not even sure the last time the show did 2.2 million viewers for a quarter. But, uh, man, that thing shot straight up. And next week, when they have The Rock and Roman Reigns advertised for the show, I think we're going to have another one of those. I think, um, if I recall correctly, uh, the last time it shot straight up, I think, was uh, when they did the that uh, Cody Rhodes deal uh, last week on the show. If I can find it here, that would have been, uh, what's today, March 20th? Yeah, so the Cody Rhodes segment also shot straight up last week, which I was very, very impressed by. It was like the highest rated show, or highest rated quarter on the show by far, 1.96 million. So uh, it shot even higher than that for uh, CM Punk in Chicago with Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. And, man, whatever the heck that segment was. You know what that was? That was a promo train wreck is what that was. And somebody in the chat here says, What? What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? A train wreck? Oh, my God. We have had train wreck segments in professional wrestling and on the microphone. Look, that may have gone on for way too long, but three guys all hit their points and all scored points they with the did. fans, I thought. They did. I was I was I was greatly compelled. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. But, you know, listen, I don't want this to go out on the internet saying that I'm saying this is true. I'm just saying this is a fan, okay? I watched that segment and someone in the chat here goes, pretty sure all three of those guys actually hate each other. And uh as a fan watching it, as a fan watching it, I thought I'm pretty sure those three guys hate each other. And even (laughs) Seth goes, are you guys done trolling each other yet? Because Drew and Punk going back and forth. Listen, everybody, there was, there were some, you know, anytime you do anything like, you know, everyone's kind of pretty much on the same page mostly, but, but not always. And I don't care what anyone tells me. You cannot convince me for any amount of money that it was scripted for Drew McIntyre to say, I, I'm i the chosen one, or whatever it was he said, and for CM Punk to respond with, who named you the chosen one? Say his name. Because <laughs> everyone knows who, it was Vince. And that was Punk's little checkmate right there. And, you know, Drew laughed it off and everything, but there is no way that they are scripting a Vince McMahon line into television. That was one where they decided to, uh, you know, and that happens sometimes. So, uh, but anyway, I couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off it and neither could anybody else. 2.2 million for that quarter. People complaining about that. Don't be silly. Look at your boy Lenny in the chat. 1997 called and wanted its segment back. 
Come on, man. There yeah, you know what you know what was really popular in 1997? Wrestling. It was called a boom period, and it was insanely successful. And so I don't know how that's some sort of uh, knock on anything. Look, there were a lot of people who seemingly are going out of their way to try to tear down that Raw on Monday, which, you know, hey, to each their own. If people hated it, they hated it. I think it's been the best one of this new regime certainly the best raw in quite some time but certainly under tko auspices this has been the best one i thought it was a well-balanced show i thought they hit on everything they needed to hit and even the stuff that went too long it was actually as you said it was compelling whether you thought that went too long or whether you thought the rock stuff with cody at the beginning went too long now the other thing i got to talk about at the top of the show here is I know people like to say that I never can admit that I'm wrong, but that's that's just a lie. Mm-hmm. I I have many times. Wait a second. But I will, I will double down. Oh, I why? will die on this hill. Do you understand? <laughs> All right. What is it? I watched NXT last night, and they did Prime Target, Carmelo Hayes, and Trick Williams. Man. And, oh, my God, they went back to, like, who did they have on here with, with, uh, there was a segment with Trick, which was, like, the greatest segment I've ever seen. It was, they went back to Philadelphia. They actually went to Philadelphia. And Trick is introducing us to sweet baby James, his uncle, who took him in and is the reason that he is in NXT today. Fly to death. Sweet baby James is going to stand and deliver. They had an interview with Gary Cobb, who was a former NFL player. I don't even know why they interviewed him. I mean, did Trick was he coaching Trick at he some was point? Running the steps type of I don't know. Teammate, I'm sure. But this guy, I swear to God, he cut the best promo of anyone in NXT by miles. I was dying, dying to see Jerry Cobb and uh, The Rock go back and forth in a promo battle. Or Curtis Ikea, it doesn't matter to me. And uh, and then they talked to William Davis, a family friend, who got the second greatest. And anyway, <laughs> this freaking prime target, when this was over, why in the name of the good Lord above is this not trick going for the title at WrestleMania? Dude. Why? And then, stop, Mike. I don't want to hear it. I'll mute you. Then, then it's the world title feud. Do you guys know what they're doing for the world championship feud? Well, first off, Elia gets in the ring with freaking Stax. Okay? I like Stax. Okay? I like the guy. He gives this guy 95% of the match. Stax just beats him, and, and the crowd's dead. Because the crowd's singing the exact same thing I am. I want to see Ilya Dragunov kill some bloke. But he just sells and he sells. It's like a Randy Savage match. I'm going to sell the entire match from the opening bell. And then I'm going to hit one flying elbow at the end. Or in Ilya's case, one torpedo. Escape by the skin of my teeth. And then the follow-up is... Tony wants to meet him for dinner next week. One should not have to do with the other, They're Brian. They're going to dinner. Oh, boy. This is the build to the world title. Bro, this, what do you want me to take this trick prime to target pool? was like Mayweather Pacquiao back oh, in 2008 boy. when they did that uh, that series on HBO. Bro, I, I was just aghast. I'm like, why in God's name? Bro, Mike. Mike. What? There's not even a stip. I know. It's not loser leaves town. It's not last man standing. Well, there should it's be not step. lights out. It's, be hey, step. guys, we're going to do a, the best prime target I've probably ever seen at NXT. It was. For it was. a wrestling match. I mean, come on. Look, it come was, on. Brian, you're exactly right. And if you wanted to do the title, you could have done that. But they decided to go with Ilya Dragunov. This is the champion, and I'm fine with that. As long as we get Trick Williams and Carmelo one-on-one, with some sort of definitive finish. And I would rather it be a stip match, but you keep dragging up the title, don't worry. He'll have it soon. I don't want him to have the title after WrestleMania weekend. I want sweet baby James to be sitting there over WrestleMania weekend watching Trick win the title. 
Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.